What's up guys, Eric here from TechSode TV and today we're going to be talking about why I switched from the iPhone XS Max back to the Galaxy Note 9. The first reason is something that I didn't actually expect when I moved over to the iPhone XS Max from the Note 9 in the first place and that's the S Pen. I didn't realize how much I used the S Pen on the Note 9 before switching. There are a few things that I do on an everyday basis with the S Pen that you just can't do on an iPhone. For example, if my screen is off and I'm talking to somebody at work about a project I'm working on and I need to write down a project number or a part number or something like that really quickly, I don't have a notepad with me, that's fine. All I have to do is take my S Pen out and then write whatever note I need to write and then I can pin that to my lock screen so I have it quickly and easily when I get back to my desk or I can just put the pen back in and it'll save it right into my notes and I can get to that later. That is something I do almost every day at work. Another thing I do quite frequently with the S Pen is copy text that you otherwise can't easily copy. So right here I have a very small text message but it's gonna make the point. If I want to copy text here, I can't just long press and select some of the text. I can copy all of the text but I can't just copy some of it. But if I have an S Pen, I can hold the S Pen button down and swipe across and select just a single word or a few characters, whatever I wanna select and then tap copy. I didn't realize how often I actually use that feature. Like if, if someone wants me to meet them at a restaurant and it's a restaurant that I haven't gone to before and it's kind of a weird name, I can just quickly copy just the name of the restaurant and then search for that on Google Maps. Conversely, on the iPhone, if I want to do the same thing, you just can't. I can long press this message and that'll let me copy the whole message. And if I tap more, then that just lets me delete messages, right? So you don't get that same ability to kind of granularly select specific words or letters out of a message. And it's more than just text. There's lots of different places in each OS, either through like internet browsers or different applications in general, where you can't just long press to select text. But if you have an S Pen, you can press the S Pen button down and select it. Another S Pen feature that I found myself using way more in real life than I thought I would when it was first announced is the Bluetooth functionality of the S Pen. So if you hold the S Pen button down, I have it set to open up my camera. And if I double click the S Pen, it'll switch from the rear to the front. And I can double press it again and go to the rear again. But let's go ahead and flip it back to the front now. And if I click it once, it'll take a picture. Now this has come in incredibly handy for taking family pictures. I've got two little kids, so to be able to set up my phone on a little tripod and then have this little uh, remote effectively in my hand that I can hide behind, you know, either my wife when I put my arm around her or behind one of my kids or something like that, it's super easy to get a bunch of pictures taken from a distance without having to run to the camera with a timer, hit the button, run back for the picture, run back, hit the button, run back for another picture, which is how I used to do it. And this also does work with the timers. So if I went to the settings here and I can go ahead and tap the timer, I can do two, five, or 10 seconds. Typically I'll just do two seconds when I'm taking the family pictures. I'll back out of here and I'll click this. And then two seconds later, it'll take the picture. That is something that I've used way more than I ever thought I would. And it's definitely one of the reasons why I'm switching back to the Galaxy Note 9. Now those are just the S Pen features that I use frequently. There's actually a ton of other S Pen features that are really powerful for doing really unique things on a Note device and I will use those occasionally, just not quite as often. If you wanna see what all those powerful features are, I'll have a link above to a playlist where I have a handful of videos that really dive deep into everything that the S Pen can do. This next thing is pretty small, but also really annoying. So on the iPhone XS Max, the home screen setup, moving your apps around, all of that is just extremely frustrating and it takes an unbelievable amount of time to move apps around. If you wanna change things up or you download new applications and you just wanna change the order of things, it's way more difficult than it needs to be, especially when this phone was released late 2018, like we should be past this by now. And hopefully there's been rumors that Apple is going to change their kind of operating system, how it flows, the apps, how you can kind of place the apps and stuff. Supposedly, maybe, there's been a rumor that maybe this year we'll get a nice big update to actually arrange things the way we want to and not just from top to bottom and then that's your only choice. What I mean is, if you look over here, I can't take this app 
and then, oh, hold on, long press, okay. I can't take this app and then just drag it and keep it here on the bottom, All right? So I can't have these four apps and then maybe four more apps and then that's it and have the rest of it just be, you know, some really cool background. No, it has to be at the top. And the top of the phone, especially on the 10s Max, is pretty far away, right? So like it's, you really gotta do some finger gymnastics or you've gotta get used to the, um, the gesture that they have to bring the screen down. You have to do that quite often. And I just don't like doing that. So here I have five apps across the bottom. And sometimes, depending on, on what I'm doing, where I'm going, uh, I'll have a few more apps here at the bottom. And the rest of this will just be pretty clear. I mean, as you can see, I have a transparent widget here and I have another widget here with the day and the temperature outside. And in my opinion, it's a pretty clean look. And that's just not possible on an iPhone. And the other thing that's frustrating is just moving applications in general, right? So if I wanna reorder any of these applications, you have to long press, and then you have to then drag one application over at a time to get it into whatever order you want to, and then all the other ones are just gonna kinda shift out of the way. You can't select multiple applications and drag them to another page, which is really unfortunate, because if you download you know, a bunch of new apps or something like that, and you wanna move all of those apps to your first page, you would have to click each app, drag it to the side, wait for it to carry over, and then drop the app there, and then drag the next one, all the way over until you got to the other page and then drop it where you want it, one app at a time. And you also can't change whole pages. So I have this page of applications here. If I wanted to switch and move this page over here and have maybe this page be my home page effectively, you can't do that. That's, that's not an option on the iPhone. I would have to move all of these applications one by one to another page over here just so that this could be my main page and I'd have to move all these applications back this way. That would take such a long time, which is why I never do anything with my applications on the iPhone XS Max. It's just the order that they install in, like that's just how I keep it. Maybe I'll move a couple things around, but for the most part, I just leave it the way they were installed. Now looking at the Note 9, if I wanna add a bunch of applications to this page, let's say I downloaded a bunch of new applications, I swipe up, get to my app drawer, and I long press, tap select items, and I can just kind of haphazardly click a bunch. Let's say these are the new ones that I want to add to the page, long press, and then I can just drag that anywhere on the page, drop it. All of my applications have now been moved to this page. And if I want to reorder them, like let's say I want to have Zoho Mail and then YouTube Studio and then VRBO and then Wix in that order, I tap them in that order, that's the order I want them in. I can then tap, drag, and then they move in that order. And then if I long press, I can then take this whole page and move it to the other side over here. So now this page is to the left of my home screen. So if I tap that, I can go left to this page or I can go right to that page, tap home, go back there. And I can change my home page. I can go here, tap that home icon and then hit the home button again. I can go here, hit the home button, takes me back over to that page. There's no way you can do any of those things on the iPhone XS Max. While we're talking about customizing your home screen, this seems like an appropriate time to bring up theme support. So Galaxy devices have theme support built right in. So there's a Samsung theme store. You can go to that store and you can download different themes and that's gonna change your background. It's gonna change what your icons look like. It'll even change what your notification shade looks like, what your dialer looks like, what your messages app looks like. It's gonna change all of those different things and I'll demonstrate that for you right now. All you have to do is long press somewhere on the home screen, then tap themes. And at the very top, you can see any themes that you've already downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this snowman theme here, and I'm gonna click apply. So after a few seconds, the theme is applied. And now when you look at the bottom, you can see all of my icons are now snow themed. If I tap the dialer, you can see that that has now changed to a snow theme. Same with the messages app. If I go into that, there's now this snowman in the background and the color for the different messages has now changed as well. So everything has changed. Even the bottom here, the home button is now a little almost gingerbread looking house. The back button's a mitten and the recent apps button is a snowflake. And if I go to my lock screen, 
I have this cool animation with snow whirring around. I have smoke coming out of the uh, chimney here, and the little snowmen are blinking too. So it's just a, a cute, kind of neat animation that you get with these themes. And all I had to do was effectively tap a couple buttons to apply the theme, and all of these things were changed automatically. Now going back over to the iPhone, all you can do is really kind of change your background to something really cool, but your icons are all gonna stay the same, your menus are all gonna stay the same. Everything is just gonna be exactly as it was when you bought it in the first place, with just a few minor details that you can tweak. While I'm still using this theme, let me quickly jump into the notification shade to show you that that has also changed colors, but there's something else I wanna show you here as well. The notification shade is, in my opinion, much more powerful on the Galaxy Note 9 than the control center on the iPhone XS Max. And one of the main reasons for that is you can quickly connect and disconnect from all sorts of things on the Note 9 that you can't do from the iPhone XS Max control panel. Namely, Bluetooth. If I wanna to connect to a new Bluetooth device, all I have to do is tap below this bar, and all of a sudden, here are all the devices that I have paired. If I keep scrolling down further, I'll see available devices as well. So I haven't even left my home screen yet, and I have access to all of my Bluetooth devices. On an iPhone, if I pull down the control center and I long press on these, this Bluetooth icon, that doesn't do anything, 3D touching doesn't do anything. All I can do is turn Bluetooth on and off, but I can't connect to new devices through here. Instead, I have to leave whatever app I'm in, go to my home screen, go to whatever page I have my settings app on, open the app, then go to Bluetooth, and then I can see all of my connections there. And the same deal goes for Wi-Fi, right? So here I am on the Note 9. If I tap underneath the bar, then I can see all of the available wireless networks to connect to. And for those of you who really don't know anything about the Android operating system, you don't have to be on your home screen to access this page. You can be in any application. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open up the phone app and you can see everything is still right there. And while we're talking about this notification shade, your icons at the top are way more useful. Now the iPhone has this notch design, so it can't fit as many icons up top, but that does make it a lot more difficult to see things like, do you have any new messages? Do you have any new emails? Do you have an alarm coming up? Like those are all different things that I can quickly see here at the top of my Note 9, and I just can't see any of that information here on my iPhone. Now, sure, you can pull down your notification shade and see all the different notifications, and Apple has done a lot of updates recently to actually make this pretty useful. The notification shade on the iPhone used to be so unbelievably terrible, um, but now it's actually, you know, it's decent. I still prefer the notifications on uh, Android devices. I think you could just, they're a lot easier to interact with. You could do a lot more with them, and they're just, uh, easier to, to follow, I guess, if, if, if that makes sense. Um, so I think Apple still has some work to do to make their notification shade better, but it's at least light years better than what it was a couple years ago. So there's that. Something that came as a really big surprise to me was that when I switched back from the iPhone XS Max to the Note 9, I noticed that the Note 9 was able to keep a lot more applications open in RAM in day-to-day -day use. Now, the reason that was so surprising is that in my speed test between the 512 gigabyte version of the iPhone XS Max and the 512 gigabyte version of the Galaxy Note 9, the iPhone XS Max was able to keep more applications open in RAM. The way I did that test is I started at the top, opened up a bunch of applications, then went backwards, reopening those applications, and like I said, the iPhone XS Max had more left open in RAM. So I expected in my day-to-day -day use to be able to notice that and see that I had less reloads on the iPhone XS Max, but that just wasn't true. And I think the reason is that when you turn the screen off on the iPhone XS Max, after some period of time, it's going to start dumping those applications out of RAM, the older applications. Maybe it's to save battery, I don't really know why it's doing that, but I did notice that it was definitely doing that. On the Note 9, it doesn't do that. There have been times where I open up an application at say 6, 7 p.m. and then I didn't use that application again until the next morning and it was like maybe 9, 10 a.m. And when I opened the application, it was still loaded in RAM almost 12 hours later, which is pretty ridiculous. Actually, that's more than 12 hours later. Uh, it was still loaded in RAM. Now, the other thing I noticed on the iPhone while we're talking about applications and reloading apps is that some apps take forever to reload on the iPhone compared to the Note 9. So here I have uh, Twitter, right? So, so let me just show you here. There's no apps open. 
on the iPhone XS Max and there's nothing open on the Note 9. But if I go and open Twitter on both of them, Twitter opens so much faster on the Note 9. And it's not just Twitter. There's a ton of applications that just open a lot faster on the Note 9. And that really becomes noticeable on a day-to-day -day use, especially if you're switching back and forth between these two devices often. You'll notice that the Note 9 just feels and literally is much faster when it comes to opening and reloading applications. One of the biggest reasons I'm switching back to the Note 9 may surprise you. It's actually the Apps Edge. I didn't realize how much I use this until I started using the iPhone XS Max and didn't have this shortcut panel here. What's so great about this, if you're not familiar, is that it doesn't matter what application you're in. I could be in my dialer application and swiping from the side, and I can still get access to all of these applications. And another big thing is if you long press one and drag in, you can open up most of the applications in this pop-up view mode, which I do with the calculator very often. So for me, having very quick access to all these applications is just such an awesome feature that I had a hard time living without. Now, obviously, there's a ton of other edge panels and different things you can do with these edge screens, and I have a whole video dedicated just showing you all the different things you can do, but personally, I typically just use the Apps Edge. Sometimes I have the uh, weather panel in there, so if you swipe across, you'd also be able to see the weather, but for me, most of the time, it's just the Apps Edge. Now, to Apple's credit, if you swipe down on any home screen, you'll get this suggested applications, and Apple did a good job with their algorithm for figuring out what applications you typically use during what times of day. So a lot of the times, the applications I needed did happen to be in this set of eight applications here, but there were still a lot of times where it didn't. So for me personally, while Apple's done a great job with this suggested applications panel, I personally prefer having the applications that I know I want to use all the time in a panel that's always accessible. The next big reason why I'm switching from the iPhone XS Max to the Note 9 is multi-window. Now there's no multi-window support on the iPhone XS Max. And when I say multi-window, most people just think of the fact that you can open up something like YouTube, start playing a video, and then you can open up a second window, and then you can watch a video while you know texting someone back or something like that. And this is a big part of multi-window and I do use it like this sometimes if I'm watching a video and I wanna look something else up on the internet or I wanna text someone back or do something on Twitter or something like that at the same time. This is a great way to do that. But there are a lot of other things you can do with multi-window as well. And real quick, a lot of people don't know this, but you can use Netflix in multi-window mode, but you do have to change some settings to do that. Um, there's a handful of things you need to do to make that work. So if you wanna see how to do that, you can check out the video above where I cover everything related to multi-window. And I'll also have a link in the description if you wanna check there. So one of the less common features that you can do with multi-window that I personally use a ton is this pop-up view mode. So let me go ahead and back out of multi-window here. I'm just gonna go back to my home screen here. Now, Pop-up view gives you the ability to bring applications into a smaller window. So here you can see I have my calculator taking up the full screen, but if I swipe down from the corner, I can resize this to anything I want, and then I can drag that around my screen, and that can stay up on top of any other application. Another great use for this is creating something like a Facebook Messenger bubble for other social media applications like Twitter. So let me go ahead and minimize that and I'm gonna open up Twitter, and I'm going to shrink this down. I can drag this around, and if I tap this minimize button, I now have Twitter in this little minimized spot here, and if I tap that, I can reopen Twitter and quickly get back to a conversation, just like you can with the Facebook Messenger bubbles. Another feature that's really important to me that the iPhone XS Max doesn't have is super slow motion recording. Now the XS Max has slow motion recording at 240 frames per second, but the Note 9 can record at 960 frames per second. There's a big difference between the two. And it's especially cool to use if you've got little kids and they're playing either with bubbles or they're splashing in water, you're at like a water park or something like that. The videos that you get and the excitement and the joy and you see in your kids' faces in that super slow motion with the bubbles and everything going around is just really cool. So as a dad, I think that that's an awesome feature and it's something that I use a lot with my kids. The last reason I'm switching back to the Note 9 is actually a pretty simple one. 
and it is because the Note 9 is much more compatible with the Galaxy Watch than the iPhone XS Max is. Now you can use the Galaxy Watch with the iPhone XS Max. I did make a whole video on it to show you everything you can and can't do. And there's a decent amount that you can do, but there's just so much more that you can do with the Galaxy Watch when paired to the Note 9. And this is my personal favorite smartwatch on the market, mainly because I love the style. I love the scrolling bezel feature. And I also love the fact that you have an always on display. So at all times, this screen stays on. So even when you're not using the watch, actively like looking at it and doing something on it, it still looks like a real watch from a distance. Now, obviously that's all personal preference. I'm sure there are some of you who look at the Apple Watch and think that looks cooler than the Galaxy Watch, and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, especially when it comes to style. Let me know what your favorite phone is in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video if you liked it, share it if you loved it, and subscribe for more. And while you're at it, smack that notification bell so you can be the first to see my upcoming Galaxy S10 coverage. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.